In our news bulletin for tonight, the new police continue to monitor traffic and address issues with parking in the township of Olofi. Safety devices have been installed at Sir Robert's Wharf. The new development bank have rolled out their low carbon fund encouraging people to get energy efficient appliances. Parking in Alofi is starting to become a hazard especially on roadsides within the main township. Newer police is responsible for monitoring traffic but it appears that people are continuing to park on the wrong sides of the road and double park which is becoming an issue. The limited amount of parking space available and an increase in number of vehicles on island seems to be an additional problem that they are trying to address. It has become an issue where um, you know, we're getting a lot of uh, motor vehicles parking on the wrong side of the road and, um, and also probably parking um, you know, where it's not sort of uh, appropriate for other road users. So we've continued to monitor this, and it becomes an issue. And I guess I do understand that, um, you know, New Year is becoming, to, uh, becoming a country where it's, uh, um, you're getting a lot of tourists come onto the island. We can't stop that from happening because that's what we would like to have happen, is to have a lot of people come onto the island, especially tourists. But I think it's just uh, uh, making that known to them and, and, and helping them understand that. And I know that a lot of our local people do get frustrated quite a bit with um, vehicles and so on. Um, but we're asking people to um, sort of just uh, uh, bear with us because uh, we are finding ways of how we can uh, deal with this. On boat days, the road can get quite congested with large vehicles transporting containers and the wharf area is often closed off to the public. As well as parking in central Olofi becoming limited when certain areas are marked off using cones. Apart from monitoring traffic, the police department is looking at other ways to address this issue by putting up more signage and applying road markings. It's not a, a very cheap um, uh, you know, task to do to, you know, to, to put road markings on the road and so forth. Um, but that's what we're working on now is we're bringing our equipment in so that we could mark the roads out nicely and, um, and also our road signs so that we can put up for people to, to see. Now, you've got genuine people who, um, who are not aware of it, um, and especially if you've seen tourists come off the island. Um, I'm not blaming them to say that they do know, but that they don't know. Um, you know, they're quite used to seeing road markings and also signs out for them to be aware of. Um, but we're asking also for uh, people to give us time. Uh, we'll work on it, and um, hopefully we'll be able to deal with this issue that's an ongoing issue. The department has acknowledged that some locals may be frustrated, but there needs to be a better understanding for all, considering that there is a lack of options when some cafes are located in areas with limited parking. Where do they park? Um, well, really, there's no areas for them to go and park it. And, you know, I mean, you can see in town here um, that we've got the most cafes down here, um, and it's in the most awkward places. Um, uh, but like, you know, I mean, if you look back three years ago, we really didn't have the influx of tourists coming in. Um, but you can really see it now where there's so many tourist cars. Um, we've got to find a space for them so that they can come park their cars in. Um, so we're happy to put signs out. Um, but then uh, where do they park at the end of the day? I mean, most of the, um, the areas here are private parking or private houses. Um, so we're just going to get the issues from everywhere, really. I mean, if we tell them to go and park in these private um, areas, then we're going to get them complaining to us about these cars. So I think it's, it's more working together with, um, with the private sector and understanding um, where their issues are at. Um, and then we'll be able to sort of monitor it properly by putting up signs and also road markings. In the meantime, the department is calling for public cooperation to address this ongoing issue and minimise the risks or hazards for road users. The Fisheries Division has installed new safety devices alongside the wharf facing the water. This is to safeguard the fishing boats and dinghy that use the wharf facilities to go fishing. Money allocated for this job is from New Zealand Aid and the installation of these fenders will take away the worries of fishermen every time they launch or lift their boat out of the water. 
There is no known facility on the island to repair the damage to these boats, and while these safety devices are long overdue, it is a welcomed addition to Sir Robert's Wharf, as it not only eliminates fishermen's concerns, it has also improved the wharf's outlook for visitors who come to Niue by yacht or tourist ships. This project uh, came up from the, de- uh, the needs from the fishermen themselves. It's been long um, asked from them to have some um, fenders that will uh, take the impacts of the, the boats when they're coming to land or taking up, off from the wharf. Uh, from the beginning, it, it was quite hard on the boats, and boats are quite expensive hitting on the sides of the wharf. The concrete on boats uh, have um, caused some um, uh, damage to some of the boats. Uh, Hence, they ask uh, fisheries if we can uh, put some uh, fenders or some uh, cushioning uh, uh, materials on the sides of the wharf that will take the impact of that that collision. So that's why we put in the fenders at the moment. And uh, it is a good thing for all the, the boats when they come in. It uh, provides safety and also provides uh, longevity to to their boats. It's just a positive from some of the, the fishermen that have uh, uh, relayed to us that uh, it, it has taken a while, but they are happy that it's there, especially those with charter vessels and everybody uh, in particular, you know, using the, the wharf area at the moment with the boats. I guess people are happy that um, that their boats are safe and also the people that uh, on these boats are safe also at the moment. There are about 20 boat owners who use the wharf and even though there is no known or expensive damage to their boats, there have been occasions when heavy swells and big swells made it quite a challenge to manoeuvre them at times. Fishing is one of the main sources of income for newest fishermen and it is hoped that these fenders will put their minds to rest about going fishing. There are fenders to lessen the impact of collision with the wharf. According to one of the boat owners who relied on fishing for his income, it's a long time coming. A low-carbon fund that encourages people to minimise power consumption by purchasing energy-efficient appliances is now available from the Niue Development Bank. This initiative is a combined effort between the Government of Niue, the International Union for Conservation of Nature and the Niue Development Bank. The expectation is that by saving energy, clients will also be able to save money, but the fund is only available for specific appliances. If you purchase a fridge or a freezer with a star rating of 3.5 or greater or a washing machine with 4 star or greater, Um, The fund will provide some benefits, so the the benefits are um, if you're a lending customer, so if you borrow money from the bank to purchase the item, the bank will do that at 0%. Uh, We'll use our normal lending criteria uh, to do that and we will fund 10% of the purchase price as well. So that's a really good deal and we'll, (coughs) we'll assess the loan just the way we assess our normal loans at Niue Development Bank. So you just come in and go through the processes with us. Um, we'll also assess the item you're purchasing to make sure it qualifies within the criteria that's set um, through the fund. The other option is if you've got cash for the fund, uh, cash sorry, to make the purchase, you can do that direct with the retailer. You just make the purchase. We'd pay to check with us first to make sure the item actually qualifies, so you know it's 3.5 or 4 star rated. And then what we would do is you bring the invoice into the bank, talk to us, um, we would then approve it, we would provide a refund to you of 25% of the purchase price. So no matter what you do, whether you've got cash or whether you borrow the money from the bank, it's a really good deal. Discussions were held in March this year to finalise the processes and eligibility criteria or requirements for this fund. We're basically saying it's for businesses and for households, so a maximum of two appliances per business or per household. So it's for the, yeah, right across, you know, anyone on new way, basically. People with existing loans will be eligible. And we're going to, even though we use our, our existing loan criteria, we will be a bit more flexible around that because we want to encourage people to get these appliances, but we also don't want to lend them money they can't afford to pay back, even though it's at 0%. 
you still have to pay the principal back. So that's why we assess them like we do, just to make sure we don't lend people money that they can't pay us back. The Low Carbon Fund is a self-sufficient revolving fund that will be available on a repayable basis with no interest or additional fees. There's no fees to the client, so any fees that are payable come directly out of the fund. So that the client, the only um, debt the client would have is the loan they have. So, for example, if the client buys a machine worth $1,000, we will pay $900 um, will come from the loan to go to the supplier, and the other $100 will come from the fund to go to the supplier. So the, the client only has uh, one loan of you know the amount purchased less than 10%. So that's uh, yeah, reasonably straightforward. It is expected but that by using the repayment scheme on loans, the funds will replenish itself and the newer development bank welcomes inquiries and encourages people to make use of these funds that are currently available. And those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. We do hope that you can join us for our next news bulletin on Thursday.